podcast dedicated to informing you about the toy we all love, Lego. Half of the movie is watchable, and the other half is listenable. This planned, I, I learned a lot of different things about what to do and what not to do, as far as stop motion animation is concerned. Great film. That is awesome, and I loved it. Hello and welcome to another edition of the LBAM podcast. Um, today I am joined by Jack Moeller, aka Aton. Uh, what was it? Automaton Pictures. Automaton Pictures. Okay. Uh, um, this is our first interview that is not based around brick filming, so that's something I'm happy to be doing. Um, so, um, Jack, tell our listeners exactly what, what, who you are and what you do with Legos. So, my name is Jack, um, and on Flickr I go by Automaton Pictures, and, um, really I just love doing photography with Lego, and I've been doing that for about a year now, um. And, yeah, it's kind of what I do. I also do some mocks and stuff, and some brick films, but not that as often. Okay, cool. So, how did you get started with Lego? Well, uh, like most people, I was kind of introduced to Lego and stuff when I was around five or something like that. <laughs> um, the first set that I can remember getting, um, hmm, I think it was... A Harry, it was a Harry Potter set. Um, it, I think it was called The Final Challenge, but um, I kind of just collected Star Wars for a while, and I didn't really fully appreciate Lego until somewhere in 2009, where just one day on a whim, I broke down all of my Star Wars sets and stuff and used them all for parts to build new spaceships and stuff like that. Before that, I'd never really done any mocks or anything like that. So... From there, I just really got into the hobby and stuff, and um, for about two years, I kind of just built spaceships and stuff like that, and somewhere in there, I discovered the online community, and I was amazed by everything everything that everyone was building. Um, it was really just way bigger than I'd ever thought it would be, and <laughs> there were adult fans, and it was just incredible, so... Yeah, for a while I just sort of hung back and looked at everyone's work and stuff like that. Um, and then somewhere in early 2012, uh, a good friend of mine, he goes by Ewokologist on Flickr, um, told me that Lego was going to be doing a Lord of the Rings theme be um, because of the upcoming Hobbit films. And I'd kind of heard of Lord of the Rings up to that point, but um, had never really watched the films or read any of the books or anything like that so yeah. it was really in some ways lego making the theme that got me into it um but i started reading the books and watching the films and just completely became a huge tolkien fan um and somewhere a little bit after that i started doing pictures after seeing s some stuff that some amazing artists on Flickr, such as, like, Del Gax and Kevin Boots and stuff had done, and, um, I've really kind of been doing it ever since, and I created my Flickr account almost a year ago now, and it's just really been fun. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, what, what inspired you to start posting stuff on Flickr and doing all the amazing stuff you do with your pictures? Thank you. Um... So, like I said, I was inspired by a bunch of amazing people on Flickr, like Avanaut and um, Delgac certainly was one of my biggest inspirations. Um, and after seeing some of Kevin Boots' photos on Flickr, I decided that I could sort of do the same thing and um, took some minifigs outside and took some pictures. And the first sort of Lego photography picture that I did just a little shot of Aragorn against some rocks in my backyard, and um, it's actually on my Flickr account, but 
that was really the beginning for me. And um, later on, I sort of started to take more sort of studio shots of minifigs against like black construction paper. And um, somewhere around then, I started to figure out Photoshop a little bit more and realized really just what a great resource it was. Um, and I could do all sorts of stuff. I could make things glow. I could add smoke and other practical effects and all sorts of stuff on the computer. And a little bit after that, I created a Flickr account and uploaded some of my pictures. And yeah, that's kind of <laughs> how I got into it. Awesome. So uh, I noticed on your Flickr account you have a good many Star Wars starfighters that I believe the majority of them aren't actual Star Wars vehicles. Am I right in that? Yeah. Um, so, like, what inspires you to come up with all those different mocks and stuff? Well, somewhere in well, 2012, I mean 2013, um, FBTB from Bricks to Bothins.net hosted a alphabet fighter contest um, where sort of based upon other X-wings and B-wings and stuff in Star Wars that sort of look like the letter you had to build spaceships based upon letters, like, that was in the shape of a certain letter. So I entered, and one thing that you had to do is sort of create a minifig pilot that would be your sort of character that would pilot all the ships that you made. So I created this Celestin Imperial spy by the name of Alter Skendiv, who's a character that I've really sort of come to like and I'm creating more mocks around right now. Um, but anyway, I entered in the contest and um, made it through three rounds. I created an I-wing, a D-wing, and a T-wing. And finally went out in the third round against the incredible Simon Liu, who's Simon Mox on Flickr. And he had this great T-wing. But um, it was a great experience, and I was honored to compete against such great builders as the guys that I did. Oh yeah, and something I noticed that um I believe it was in the T wing instead of doing the normal, um, making the Lego plates come out for the wings, you used um snot to make the the snot building style to make the wings look fl flat and not have the studs on top of them. Yeah, I love snot. It's really sort of such a fun technique. Uh -uh. But yeah, I kind of was using that in some ways to be more parts effective. And also to have the wings be stronger as well as sort of hide the studs. So there were several sort of factors that helped me to decide to do that. Um, but yeah, it was really kind of a hectic couple of weeks doing that because like I, whenever I could, I just dash up to my room and start scrambling to find parts. And each ship went through like five revisions. And even then I wasn't really satisfied with it. But then the night of the deadline, I rushed back downstairs and get out with all my um, sort of studio stuff and madly take pictures and edit them and <laughs> hope to get it done in time. <laughs> so um, I think it's the I-wing and the D-wing were both primarily black colored and yeah. the T-wing was gray and blue. What was the, why, why did you change the color style there? Well, I have a lot of black elements, um, and I was just sort of trying to use those to my advantage while also sort of making Alturf's vehicles look very imperial, sort of like the TIE fighters in Star Wars and stuff. So, and he was also sort of a spy, so I wanted them to look sort of stealthy. So, you, doing the black ships was really sort of both parts effective and realistic to the character, but they weren't very sort of vibrant or unique in terms of the color scheme so for the third ship i decided i'd do something a little bit different and i colored the t-wing in the classic space colors which is um a ships made primarily of blue and gray with sort of yellow highlights um and i wrote up a whole backstory for why he had that ship in particular but um I just wanted to do something a little bit different from all the black ships that I'd done for him for that. Oh, yeah. That that's, that was really... All those spaceships are really cool. Um, Thank you. Um, and I've noticed that in your pictures you have um, Bob, 
the Superman dude? What well, was well, the deal with him? Well, actually, he was a character that I created with Ewokologist uh, on Flickr, who I know in real life. Um, we were just sort of fooling around with some of his parts and realized that the Olympic archer minifig from the exclusive Team GB minifigs, Great Britain minifigs, his hair was the same as Superman, so it'd be great for like sort of a Superman fan who styled it that way. And we just came up with this character named Bob, <laughs> who had also Bomber's head from Lord of the from the Hobbit, and he was just sort of like a crazy sort of Superman nerd. <laughs> <laughs> And we did a whole sort of series of him going to Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con, for a couple of pictures. And then he brought him back for a Halloween photo as well in his costume. Oh, yeah. So, um, what's your favorite photo, um, mock or just normal photo that's been photoshopped that you've created so far? Um, uh, I'm not really sure, but I might have to say, um... The Battle of the Hornburg, which was my 200th picture on Flickr, it took forever to create, and as just sort of a little fun thing, I made it a tagged picture, and I worked in a whole bunch of the people that were my inspirations on Flickr into the battlefield, so Mark of Falworth on Flickr is pulling Saburic High, and a whole bunch of other people are like up on like the ramparts and stuff, but it was just sort of a fun little picture that I did, but I was really pleased with the way it turned out, and of course, I still have discovered some people who, who I have now, so I might even do something special like that for my 300th picture, which is coming up soon, but yeah, that that might be one of my favorite pictures. Okay, cool. So, um, um, you have several pictures, the majority of your pictures are based around minifigures for the most part. Um with using Photoshop to give it special effects. Um, how do you come up with a certain theme you want to turn into a picture and in Photoshop? Well, most of the time I'll just sort of think about how I can create a, use the sets and minifigs that I have right now to recreate, to recreate an iconic film scene. And um, most oftentimes I'll take several pictures as soon as I get a new set or a, co a new couple of minifigs because it will opened up a whole bunch of new things that I can do. But um, oftentimes I'll either do it for a contest or a, ho it's a holiday coming up, like a Christmas or Halloween photo or like the release of a new film, like the Hobbit film or whatever. I'll just do a whole bunch of stuff based upon that to celebrate that. And it's just kind of fun. I'll just come up with pictures. I'll look at the minifigs that I have and try to think about what I can do with them, but yeah, it's kind of how I come up with it. It's not really anything too much. Oftentimes, I'll, after watching a film or whatever, too, I'll be inspired to do something based upon what was in it. Okay. So, um, how do you go about creating and creating a photo and editing it, editing it and uh, stuff like that? Well, once I have the idea, I'll typically take some time to find some reference material and uh, or watch a clip of the film again if I'm basing it upon a scene. And once I have a good idea of sort of how I'm going to do it, like what minifig's going to be where and stuff like that, I'll get all the characters that I need and all the minifigs that I need and um, sort of set it all up. And it, that can take a long time because the minifigs are very easy to knock over if I'm not doing like a composite shot. Uh, and if, if I am doing a composite shot, I'll take a, a the various minifigs that I need and shoot pictures of them against a white background in the poses that I need. And then later in Photoshop, I'll take out the white, sort of like green screen in film, and I can really put, put the minifigs anywhere and in some ways alter them and stuff. But that allows for some more freedom in that regard. Um, in terms of lighting, I often just use a couple of gooseneck desk lamps um, and diffuse the light a little bit, but really I don't have anything too special in terms of lighting. <laughs> and on average, it takes me about a half an hour to shoot a photo in terms of doing it and stuff, and then, then I'll import the pictures into 
my laptop and um, fire up Photoshop and um, get into the editing, which is like my favorite part of the process. Um, there's just something about manipulating a photo like that that I love doing. Um, but that typically takes about an hour, but sometimes it can even take up to like four hours. Um, the Hornberg picture that I mentioned earlier took about like five, I think. But um, it, I just do that for a little while. If I'm doing compositing, I'll cut out the mini figs and sort of put them all together in the positions that I need. And once I'm satisfied with the photo, I'll export it from Photoshop and upload it to Flickr. Okay. Cool. So, like, you mentioned um, lamps and stuff. I'm, what kind of software and hardware do you use for your pictures and stuff to create them? Sort of Sony point and shoot that my mom gave me. Um, but later last summer, I upgraded to a Canon DSLR, a Canon EOS Rem T3. And I've been using that since then. Um, and most of the time, I just use the included 18 to 55 millimeter lens that came with that. But I also have like a set of macro extension tube rings, which allow me to magnify an image without really getting a new lens. Um, and then for software, I most of the time use Adobe Photoshop Elements 10, which is sort of an older version of Photoshop Elements, but um, still works pretty well for the purpose and then sometimes i'll go to the local library and they have a whole media lab and um they have photoshop cs6 there which is way more advanced and if i'm doing a really complicated picture then i'll use th that there that's nice yeah it really is <laughs> yeah my library doesn't have anything like that they only recently added that in the past like six months, but it's really nice. It has a whole green screen room for film stuff that I like to do, and it's really pretty fun. Oh wow! Hmm. So, uh, uh, what advice would you give to um someone who's starting out who wants to build mocks or do photos and stuff similar to yours, like um? Just someone starting out and wants to post well, stuff on Flickr. I really just would totally recommend setting up account and stuff. It's just really such a fun hobby to do photography and mocks and all that sort of stuff. But um, really just practice and expand the skills that you have and creatively use the parts that you have in ways that you wouldn't have thought of before. Um, but... Yeah, really, just sort of work creatively, use what you have, and if you're doing photography, uh, just get better at doing that, either through tutorials or just practice. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks, Jack, for coming on the show this time. Um... If that if people want to check out your stuff, where should they go? Um, well, I have a my Flickr photo stream um, would definitely probably be the best place to go, and um, the web address for that is www.flickr.com forward slash photos forward slash automaton pictures, or you can probably just Google it Flickr automaton pictures or something like that. Um, and then I have a YouTube account, but I don't really, I haven't really posted anything for a good long while. Uh, although I am planning some new stop motion films, some brick films that I'm working on, as well as even some tutorials for Photoshop and stuff like that. Um, cool. But yeah, those are probably the places to go. And my YouTube account is t t entitled Automaton Productions, and I have a couple of videos on that. Awesome. Well, thanks, Jack, for coming on the show, and um, please note this podcast is not affiliated with the LEGO company in any way. The official LEGO website can be found at lego.com. Um, if you would like to get in touch with me or the show, please email me at lbam 
bricks, that's B R I C K S, at gmail.com. Um, thanks, Jack, for coming on. Thanks for inviting me. All right, man, and thanks to all our listeners out there who are listening. I'm living in a Lego house. I'm sitting in a Lego chair. I'm watching my Lego TV in my Lego underwear. And is it ever lumpy?